Hey, folks, this is the um, True American Podcast. Apologize for that other little mistake I made, but hey, let's get to it. There's a lot to get to. There is a lot to get to. First of all, I want to make my response uh, to this Brittany Griner, uh, Women's Basketball Association athlete. And as a matter of fact, uh, my understanding and looking at some of her stats, she's one of the best, if not the best, uh, professional female basketball athlete in the United States. I mean, she she's, uh, I think what the young people would say, she's she's quite a baller. Uh, she's over there in Russia. Uh, they found her with, with, allegedly found her with some dope. I mean, they did find her with this stuff, but it, it was, it wasn't recreational drugs. It was something to help her ease her pain. And they, they put her in prison. Um, thank God the Biden administration had enough common sense to to try to get her out. But there are some issues with that release. I'm just glad to see her out. But I have two main issues with it, her release. First of all, folks, look at who we had to let back out, you know, who we exchanged her for. We exchanged her for a guy who's basically um, something of a mass murderer. He's an arms dealer. And he's caused the death of a good many people throughout the world. He's, he's what you might call a, a, a bad character. Now, I get it. Sometimes you have to for sometimes you have to do something you don't really want to do in order to serve a, a, a greater good. But is that what happened with us exchanging Brittany, Brittany for this, this uh, arms dealer? Because we left behind a Marine. And say his name, say his name, say his name. Paul Whelan, W-H-E-L-A-N. He was unjustly in a Russian prison before Brittany was placed unjustly in a Russian prison. And so here it is, the commander-in-chief, President Joe Biden, he did not focus on getting the Marine out. He's the commander-in-chief. We don't leave our soldiers behind if it's at all possible. He could have gotten that man out, but instead he gave up a bad character to bring out a professional basketball player. I mean, couldn't we have gotten both of them out at the same time? This is not good. This is not good. Paul Whelan committed his life to serving this country. He stood up, took an oath, and said, if it's necessary for me to die to protect this nation, I will do so. He stood up, took an oath to the commander-in-chief. And our commander-in-chief at this time is Mr. Joseph Biden. And Mr. Joseph Biden got out some professional basketball person over a Marine. Now, look, here's the other thing that really bothered me. Biden has a spokesperson, his his press secretary, and she made a statement. This is all on, on, on Twitter. Don't take my word for it. You can all find this on Twitter. She stood up and said, Brittany Griner is a role model. She's inspirational. Um, she inspires a lot of people, people of color, particularly women of color, and she's inspiring to the LGBTQXYZ community. Okay, that's all fine and good. I get that. I somewhat disagree with it, but I understand. So you're telling me that Marine is not an inspiration to people of color in the United States? Are you telling me that Marine? is not an inspiration to this LGBTQTIAXYZ community? Are you telling me that Marine is not an inspiration to women of color? If that's what you're telling me, then I would say one of two things. One, you're not telling the truth, or you mis- two, you're mistaken, or three, all those so-called communities I just named off, they need to get their heads screwed on right. This man's a Marine. Paul Whelan is a Marine. He pledged to give his life, if it's necessary, to protect 
the United States of America and our Constitution. That in and of itself is an inspiration. That fact that he's a Marine, that should have caused for our Commander-in-Chief to bend over backwards to say, look, you know, he's our priority. we got to get him out. And if we can get him out in Brittany, that's fine. Let me say this, too, because a lot of people on the left, you know, a lot of the diversity people and and uh, in these so-called non-binary people and all these other kind of nut jobs. Let me tell you something. You're Americans first. You're Americans first. That's what unites us all. We're citizens of the United States of America. And on that basis and that basis alone, we need to be is we need to find common ground and be supportive of one another. I get it. You know, some of you are saying, oh, I'm oppressed. Oh, uh, no one's calling me by my proper pronouns. Hey, this is a nonpartisan issue. Get over yourselves. Stop dwelling on your genitalia. This man is a Marine. He's unjustly put in a foreign prison. Russia is a backwoods, barely second world nation. He's unjustly in prison there. He needs to come out. Brittany Griner is a U.S. citizen. I don't care about her stupid left-wing politics. I don't care about her, her backwards lifestyle. I don't care about all that. She's a U.S. citizen. She, we should have, she needs to come out of there. And I'm glad she's out. I'm glad she's out. But I'm extremely disappointed about the fact that a Marine was left behind. Folks, we need to get our heads on straight. We need to get our priorities together. This is a nonpartisan issue. They're, they're both U.S. citizens. They both need to come out, period. But let me tell you something. That identity politics community, they don't care about that Marine. Why? He's a white man. He's probably he's, he's heterosexual. He's, in, he's, he's probably a patriot. I mean, he's a Marine. Oh, we don't care about him. You know, he's, he's not, an, he's not uh, we can't identify him with any uh, disadvantaged group or any marginalized group or any oppressed group. You don't need to be identified with any marginalized or dis-oppressed group. Brittany didn't need to be identified with any marginalized or, or oppressed group. They are both, they are both U.S. citizens. It is our responsibility, the people in the government of the United States to say they both need to come out, they both need to come home. And if we had to make a choice as far as order is concerned, that Marine should have been, we should have brought that Marine out first. And then once we got him out, we should have just doubled down and bring Brittany out. Here's another thing I want to say about this whole Brittany Griner thing. These left-wing lunatics disrespecting the flag, talking about how oppressed they are, how much they hate America, how much they hate white men, cisgender white men and all that stuff. That's all fine and good. But on it, I bet you when she's up there in that Russian prison, scared to death, full of anxiety, living in horrid conditions, I bet you she started thinking, uh, well, I hope, I hope she started thinking twice about disrespecting that flag again. Because it's that flag that brought that got her out. And it's Marines like Paul Whelan that sacrificed their lives. Their very lives, their limbs, sometimes their, their, their mental sanity to see to it that that flag flies. And that flag is respected. Because that flag represents the U.S. Constitution. That flag represents our constitutional republic. That flag represents the unity of all of us. So when one of us is attacked, all of us come, step up. And when all of us attack, that one steps up. And that one was Paul Whelan. Say his name, say his name, say his name. Paul, last name spelled W-H-E-L-A-N. Let me go on to the next thing. Hear about uh, Kanye. Look, folks. Kanye West is clearly, well, 
he's he's the artist formerly known as Kanye West. Kanye West, now known as Ye, he's going off his rocker, folks. I mean, he's saying some some crazy stuff, but he's always sort of in the past has said some crazy stuff. And uh, but now all of a sudden, he's this animal and this uh, pariah we need to we need to destroy, or at least some people. A small group of people saying we need to destroy it. Well, you know, again, Kanye was sort of out there in the beginning. Now it's just, I mean, he's still out there and he's just getting worse. Many of you, I don't know if you're aware of this Kentuckian. His name is Dr. Boyce Watkins, okay? Dr. Boyce Watkins um, has direct communication with the artist formerly known as Kanye West. Go check out Dr. Boyce Watkins on YouTube. Dr. Bo- Dr. Watkins said, he said, Kanye needs help. He needs mental health. You know, he needs therapy. He needs counseling. Okay? Um, I get it with these private companies wanting to disassociate themselves with him, allegedly for his comments. But above that, and then, of course, you, have, you got other groups who want to project... Uh, Kanye West is is Hitler, black Hitler, you know, all this other kind of nonsense. Look, I get it. I understand it. But if we're truly interested in this black man and what's good for him, we need to take the attitude that, that Dr. Boyce Watkins has taken. Dr. Boyce Watkins loves his people. And that's why he talked to Kanye directly. And not, I'm not talking about five, ten minutes I'm talking about for some hours. And he came out of his long discussion with Kanye, and he said, that brother needs help. That brother needs help. Um, and, you know, like one person on my Facebook said, Kanye, take your meds, <laughs> okay? And it's sort of close to what Dr. Boyce Watkins is talking about. But Dr. Boyce Watkins, I want to I wanna push this. He starts with love and respect for black men. That's where he starts from. He starts from the position of love and respect for black folk. Dr. Boyce Walkman starts from the, the, the point of, hey, I want to push my people forward. I want to uplift them. Dr. Boyce Watkins is not a misogynist. He's not a racist, anti-transphobic. I don't, you know, all this other nonsense. He's not an anti-Semite. But you notice that when Dr. Boyce Watkins, when he approaches Kanye and he looks into the situation with Kanye, he knows all that Kanye's talking about. He comes out and he said, look, our brother Kanye, ye, whatever he's calling himself today, needs our love and support. He needs to be urged to go into therapy, to go into counseling. And now Dr. Boyce Watkins didn't say this. But like one person on my Facebook page said, hey, Kanye, take your meds, okay? I am not going to join with that mob who wants to demonize yet another black man. We are human beings. Some people don't see us that way. I mean, that's just it. They, they, they don't and they won't. That's fine. That's their business. It's America. You could hate whoever you want. You know, it's, it's flat out stupid. They want to talk about, oh, we can educate hate away or we can legislate hate away. Well, first of all, you can't legislate hate away. Uh, you know, as Dr. King once said, you, you can, uh, you know, you, you, you can't uh, legislate love, but you can regulate behavior. Those weren't his exact words, but it's along those lines. So, no, we shouldn't be trying to legislate against hate. That's stupid. That's ignorant. Uh, but. You know, you want to go out there and put a program together and say, hey, you know, let's, uh, you know, we want to share this program with you. We want to share these these sessions with you, these workshops with you. And, and hopefully the end result would be there'll be less hate in the world. You know, have at it. Do you have at it. Do your stuff. But you can't force people into that stuff. That's dumb. OK. Um, so, you know, so my point is when you come from a position of love like Dr. Watkins does, Dr. Boyce Watkins does, for his people, and and particularly for beleaguered black men, 
you know, he, he his end result is different. He he didn't sit there. Dr. Boris Washington didn't sit there and say, well, you know, Kanye said this crazy stuff and he's behaving this crazy way and that's all fine and good. He's not talking about, oh, he's a black Hitler and he's a neo-Nazi and that kind of stuff. He said, man, the brother needs help. So I'm going to make an appeal to the black community. Let's embrace this brother. Let's pray for this brother and let's urge him, urge him, urge him strongly, brother. You need counseling, man. I mean, you need counseling. Just sit down. You know, you need, to, you need to sit down, you need to get counseling, you need to take your meds. Folks, let's not forget, Kanye, wasn't that long ago Kanye lost his mother? And, you know, that would mess up most anybody. And he was very close to his mother, and he lost his mother rather unexpectedly. Anytime you lose somebody close to you, it's going to mess with your head. Um, but, you see, in the black community, we need to get over this this self hatred, and in the black community, we need to stop letting other folks tell us who to like and who to not to like, because more often than not, they come from the standpoint of they really don't care about about us black folk. They really don't. If you if you give them enough rope, they'll let you know how they really think about you. You saw that with Kyrie Irving. Who the heck? I mean, think I mean think about it. Kyrie just put a link out about a movie. Now, all of a sudden, he's the most evil thing walking on God's green earth. And and a good many of those people who initially condemned Kyrie about just posting a link to a movie, didn't even watch the movie. They didn't even, haven't even read the book. I've read the book. I'm soon going to try to buy, buy the movie. That book is over 600 pages long. I'm still going through it. I'm still trying to find out where the anti-Semitism is, I think really I've, I've figured it out. I mean, it's just not, I think i figured it out. I really do. And I'm going to talk about that later in another podcast. But my point is this. They went overboard with Kyrie. They engaged in buck-breaking. They engaged in buck-breaking. Who in their right mind says, well, we want you to go through these, um, these classes, and then uh, two different types of classes, by the way, and then after you've gone through those classes, you need to come talk to me, I think one of the owners of the Brooklyn Nets, to make sure that you understand, you properly understand uh, what you're supposed to believe. Excuse me? Excuse me? Who do you think you're talking to? I tell you who they think they're talking to. They're talking to another dumb black man. They, they, that's their attitude. He, another dumb black man. He like Kanye. He, he, Kyrie Irving. You know, Louis Farrakhan. All these crazy dumb black men. You know, we we got to tell these Negroes. We, we don't want to encourage them to think for themselves. We got to tell them how to think and what to think. Okay? Hey, let me refer to you to the miseducation of the Negro. All right, so that's all I wanted to say there about Kanye. just want to say a shout-out. Thank you, Dr. Watkins, for uh, letting us know, um, you know, what's up with Kanye. And I want to say to the black community and all people of good conscience, black, I don't care what your color skin you are, we need to pray for that brother, and we need to do everything we can to urge that brother to go get some counseling and to start and, and keep up with his meds. Because he has said some things that are just, I mean, you know, this is the United States of America. As far as I'm concerned, free speech is free speech is free, free speech. I don't think anyone should ever be uh, forced to think if they want to hate somebody, they want to love somebody, that's your business. You go do that. But when we get to the point to where we're trying to demonize people and engage in economic warfare against them because of their personal beliefs, eh, dude, I don't feel comfortable with that. I don't feel comfortable with that. Because, you know, there are some people who believe that Zionist, uh, that's a hate belief. They, they think Zionism is a form of racism. They think Zionism is a form of colonialism and white supremacy. So what if we have some Jewish guy, you know, let's say like he's a, you know, extremely popular recording artist or athlete, and he comes out, he or she comes out and talks about how great Zionism is. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Zionism, that's hate speech, that's, 
that's a that's a racist ideology. That's that's an evil ideology. That's that ideology is equivalent to Nazism. Let's engage in economic warfare against this person. Let's withdraw their contracts. Let's let's force them to go into this workshop or that workshop. And then once they come out of the workshop, they got to let us know. They got to prove to us that they they are now uh, smart people, sensible people, and moral people because they're anti-Zionist. And everybody and their mother, including me, would say, man, that's anti-Semitic. That's absurd. That's ridiculous. Leave that person alone. You get my point? You get my point? You get my point? I hope you do. I hope you think about it. Here's the last thing I want to say. Jonathan Greenblatt, he's the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, and he recently did an interview on The Breakfast Club. I want to commend The Breakfast Club for doing that interview. And they've, they've done interviews of other people. They've done interviews of Nouri Mohammed, um, Minister Louis Farrakhan. I mean, and then, of course, everybody and anybody in the hip-hop community, you know, part of that whole hip-hop culture. And I, I really, I've been listening to The Breakfast Club for years now, and I really enjoy it. I learn from them all the time. So when I heard that they, they brought on this, this uh, this brother, Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO of the ADL, I, I thought that was great. I thought that was great. It's showing us black folk we can think. You know, we can we can talk to this side and we can talk to this side, whatever. And then, you know, based upon the information and the evidence, you, you reach your own conclusions. Now, there are some things that uh, Charlemagne the God and, and DJ Envy, they, there are some things they said I disagree with, but there are, you know, a lot of other things they said I agree with. But I was just, I really want to compliment, I really want to commend the Breakfast Club for doing that interview. Now, folks, and I'm really talking to black folk right now. Now, your white folks, you can keep on listening. So I want you to think I'm some sort of racist. <laughs> but uh, I want I want black folk in particular to really think about what I'm saying and to discuss it, to go back and forth on it. I'm not asking you to agree with my points. I'm just I'm just trying to trying to motivate you to think, to talk, to talk it out and back and forth. And uh, I really wish a lot of uh, my white brothers and sisters out there would just listen to what I'm I'm saying here, folks. Let me tell you this. I listen with, to what uh, Mr. Greenblatt had to say about the ADL, ADL Anti Defamation League, their mission, how they got started. I was really fascinated, and I learned a lot. It was great. It was interesting. It's one thing I found interesting is that the ADL got started when a um, a uh, a white Jewish man was lynched, and so you know Jews around the United States were like, "Hey, wait a minute, hold on, we don't like this." All right, so they formed the Anti Defamation League, and the Anti Defamation Anti Defamation League was basically built to uh, you know to fight anti Semitism. It's perfectly understandable. Uh, I, I think that's perfectly great. I, I, I applauded that. Because, you know, black folk, when, you know, of course, you know, most, the majority of the lynchings in the United States were of black folk, particularly of black men. Hello, black men. And many of those lynchings, those black men were castrated. Hello. Hello. And many of those black men were demonized. Hello? Hello? Is anybody listening? Oh, okay. So, majority of those lynching, black lynching victims were black men, castrated, and many times it was over uh, some sort of accusation about inappropriate behavior towards a white woman. Okay? <laughs> they got upset. They want that Negro whistling at white women. Oh, no, dude. <laughs> we, we, they're going to snatch you up. Beat the tar out of you. Many times they'd castrate you and then hang you from a tree. Yeah, but, 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 you know, but of course, you know, uh, they would ask you for an apology. No, they don't ask you for an apology. <laughs> they just tore your butt up. And of course, we got a lot of pictures of, uh, of some of those lynches. And some of those lynches were horrific. The people who, um, engaged in the actual beating and the hanging of the person and then watching the person. And then just letting their, their bodies just hang from a tree, taking pictures of it. I mean, come on, man. That's a sick culture right there. 
And, of course, black folk organized against that. Uh, they, they wanted an anti-lynching law, um, which, by the way, Woodrow Wilson opposed. And Woodrow Wilson was, oops, wasn't he a member of the Democratic Party? Yeah, I think so. Check me on that. Do my research on that. Wasn't he a member of the Democratic Party? Yeah, I think so. So, um, and then there was a great book written by an NAACP researcher. I don't want to throw his name out there because, oh, Walter White. I think it was Walter White. And he wrote a book called Rope and Faggot. And I get that book. It's a classic. I think there's, I think there's almost a deliberate attempt on some people's part to destroy all evidence of that book. But it's, it's a book called Rope and Faggot. I learned about it when I was in middle school. Uh, you know, my father had a tremendous amount of books, and he'd always encouraged me to go into his library and check things out. But anyway, so I had a lot of respect for the ADL to do that. And, you know, let's face the facts. The ADL is about we're going to do what we think is necessary to, to um, protect Jewish folk. I get that. Not only do I get it, I respect it. Not only do I respect it, but I say to black folk, man, hey, they're an example. Don't ever apologize for being a pro-black. Don't ever apologize for wanting to stand up for black folk. Don't ever apologize for wanting to defend black men. Don't ever apologize for it. What do you got to apologize for it? You know, we're not out here talking about throwing people into ovens. We're not out here talking about uh, destroying people's businesses or engaging in other forms of economic warfare like they like like they've done it to Kanye and uh, and Irv and, Ky- and uh, Kyrie Irving and even the Nation of Islam we're not talking about that we're talking about black folk doing for self we're talking about black folk building building themselves up we're talking about black men you know uh, standing up you know loving black women marrying black women having sh- strong black families that's what we're talking about. We're talking about as black men. No, we don't want to see our women kill our seed, our legacy, our children. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, that that strong black nationalist thinking, that's good. For, that helps America. That helps America. I mean, ser- seriously, you look at a, a family... Like Gerald Muhammad and his wife and, and family. Ooh, I mean, it's, they're a bad example. Ooh, they're, we don't want them in our neighborhood. No, they're a positive example. They're not perfect. They have their problems, but they're a positive example. And they're, they're, they're a positive contribution. You know, that's, that's good stuff. That's great. Look at, I mean, people, I want to stop there. So I have a problem with what Jonathan, uh, Greenblatt, CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, was saying. I thought that was great. I learned something. But as he started talking a little bit more, and he, you know, he tried to say some stuff about Kanye, and he tried to say say some stuff by Kyrie Irving, and I ended listening to the interview at that point. Uh, I had to go do something else. But before I stopped listening to the interview, and I want to encourage encourage people please go check that interview out go to youtube youtube youtube.com check it out it's i know it's a good interview and uh, i plan on finish finish listening to the rest of it but let me tell you something let me tell you something there's one thing that really came to my mind the adl is talking about power power black folk don't understand that we still don't get it. We still don't get it. We still don't think tr- strategically. These, Those folks, those white folks, they call themselves Jews, Christians, Muslims. I don't care. Those white folks, they're talking about power. They're organizing for power. Not to take over the world or destroy America or anything like that, but to protect their own and to uplift their own. I respect that. I don't have a problem with that. My problem is with black folk who don't understand what the game is. And the game is, bottom line, power. You better study the ADL. You better look at what they do. I'm not saying support everything they do. I'm definitely not saying support everything they do. Because there is something, look, 
I'm, I'm, going to, I'm just going to go on to my next point. There are some things that ADL advocates that I am vehemently opposed to. Vehemently opposed to. They are, in my view, based upon what I've learned about them so far, and I'm somebody, I'm telling you, I've read their literature, I've listened to that man's interview, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm, I'm a, I've contributed to them so I can get their newsletter and all. There are some things that ADL advocates in the way of uh, fighting anti-Semitism I do not support. I do not support. They are objectively talking about more government interference in the private lives of U.S. citizens. They are objectively talking about suppressing um, free speech. Uh, they are objectively talking about using government force to have people think in a particular way. And I'm opposed to that. I'm sorry. I don't care what your reasons are. When you talk about suppressing or cur curtailing freedom of speech, that never works out well. Study your history. And it definitely never works out well for black folk. Study your history. You know, and and I specifically want to talk to you. What example? What's my example? Okay, let me give you my example. The book, From from Hebrews to Negroes, Wake Up Black America. And so, you know, Mr. Greenblatt's saying that that book is stupid and is dumb and ignorant. Okay, well, you know what? I, I read it too. And that's not the conclusion I've reached. But I'm open-minded enough for someone to tell me chapter and verse where this book, From Hebrews to Negroes, is just utterly insane, ridiculous, anti-Semitic, and Holocaust-denying, etc. I'm open to it. You know, I'm not some arrogant little twit who thinks his, his opinion is just beyond question. I'm sorry, did I just refer to Mr. Greenblatt an arrogant twit? I didn't mean to do that, honestly. And so some people would say, hey, hold on, man, what, you know, what's your problem here? Well, here's my problem. He wants, Mr. Greenblatt, the ADL, wants uh, the book from, from uh, Hebrews to Negroes removed from Amazon's list. Now, that's not the only place where you can buy this book, but he wants it removed from Amazon. I guess he just he doesn't want it sold on Amazon anymore. Okay. And Amazon's response is that, well, that's taking us down a slippery slope. And so here's what Mr. <laughs> here's what ADL decides to do. Man, they are, they let you know they have the connections, they have the network, they have the resources. They are going to go after that book and the author in whatever way possible. They're going to get their way. That's power, folks. They're just talking about exercising their power. And they just sort of cloak it in. I mean, whatever. I mean, that's they, they, just exercising power. And there's nothing wrong with that. All, all groups do that. Only groups that, do, that really don't do that and don't do it very well, black folk. <laughs> black folk in the United States. You know, we're, I don't know. So we need to, I don't know, it's ridiculous. I don't want to go too much into it. So, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, I get it, Mr. Greenblatt. You think that this book is dumb, ignorant, whatever. I get that, brother. I get that. And anytime you want to give a lecture on why you say so, why you think that, you know, chapter and verse, man, I'm going to listen to it because, you know, I, I, I respect your opinion. But guess what, brother? That's it. That's what it is. That's just your opinion. Now, even though I'm black and, and black and slow, I can reach my own, you know, I can check things out for myself and reach my own conclusions. It is not for you to deny me or to, to play a role in, in keeping that literature from me, particularly if that literature is was written by a black man, for black folk, by a black man. You know, a black man did the research, a black man did the writing, a black man put it together, and now he's offering that information out to black folk in the United States of America, and really black folks around the world and and he doesn't care who who else reads it that's for me to decide i get it you don't like the book you think the book's dumb ignorant all that that's fine but it's not for you to make the decision for me that the book is is dumb ignorant whatever 
I can check the book out for myself and reach my own conclusion. But let me tell you something, folks. ADL didn't think that way. ADL didn't think that way. ADL objectively is saying, no, y'all Negroes, y'all Negroes don't, you don't understand. You don't get it. So we, we need to, we need to decide for you. You know, when my father was raising me and my sister, he would make a very deliberate decision not to have us exposed to pornography. And he had every right to do that because he was our father, parental authority, and we were children. So he was protecting us. Now, once we became adults, then we can make up our own mind. We can make up our own decision. I think someone needs to tell Mr. Jonathan Greenblatt and others within ADL, black folk are not children. We're not children. We're not ignorant. We're not dumb. Now, for me, as an individual, I'm black and I'm slow. But I'm a man. And you need to come from the premise of I'm a man. And you need to show me some respect. And so you need to say things like, you know, Corbin, this is our opinion about this book. Oh, okay, brother. I appreciate that. But I'm still going to check it out for myself and reach my own conclusion. You know, Corbin, uh, you know, we think Kyrie's an anti-Semite. Oh, okay. I appreciate that. But I'm going to go check out Kyrie's uh, interviews and make reach my own conclusion. Well, you know, we think Kyrie, you know, he shouldn't have uh, sent out this link. So we're going to demand that when he makes a financial donation to these anti-hate groups. Okay, well, I get it. You think he shouldn't have sent that link out. And I get it. You're going to go on social media and criticize him for doing that. But who the hell are you to dictate to a man how he should give his hard-earned dollars to? Who he should give his hard-earned dollars to? Kyrie's a man. He can make his own decisions. If Kyrie wants to send money to some anti-hate groups, that's his business. It's his money, his business. You go do what you want to do, Kyrie. Or, because I noticed one, or Kyrie may want to give money to sickle cell research. But I'm going to say this to black folk who are listening. Kyrie's given a lot of money behind the scenes to help out black folk here and there. And I noticed one thing with ADL. They did, they did not say, Kyrie, uh, we want you to the Brooklyn Nets and the ADL didn't say, Kyrie, we want you to give me a, a, a big chunk of money to sickle cell research. They didn't, they didn't say that. They didn't say, Kyrie, you know, you, you, you tweeted this link and we don't like it. We think it was dumb. We think it was harmful. And therefore, one of the things we want you to do is to give a chunk of money to an HBCU. Hmm. That wasn't said, was it? I mean, really, I mean, aren't HBCUs, you talking about anti-hate group or a fairness group? I mean, HBCUs, they, you're not trying to, they're an anti-hate group, wouldn't, wouldn't you think? Couldn't you put them in that category? Couldn't you put them in the category of a, of a fairness group? So if you could, why didn't you tell, why didn't you demand Kyrie give his hard-earned money to a sickle cell research group or an HBCU. I mean, man, that's, I don't know. I just find that interesting. But here's what I find more interesting. It's not for you to dictate to any grown man where he's to give his hard-earned money uh, dollars to. You can, you can persuade him. You can try to persuade him. You try to encourage him. But to demand it? No. You can't be demanding someone go to a workshop and unlearn what you think he shouldn't, what he shouldn't support or advocate in the first place. First of all, you don't even know. You didn't even ask the brother. Hey, man, can we, can we sit down one-on-one, -on -one, you know, man-to-man, -man, equal to equal, and, and talk about some things here because we're a little concerned that you might hate us? No, you didn't say that. You didn't say that at all. You didn't take that attitude at all. Here's one last thing I want to say about that. Greenblatt interview on The Breakfast Club. And folks, again, I want to encourage you to check it out. Check it out for yourselves. It was a good interview. Here's one other thing I want to say. Um, 
Charlemagne the God said he was once called anti-Semitic. <laughs> and I laugh because I say, yeah, you know, Desmond Tutu, Nobel Peace Prize winner, he was called anti-Semitic. Kyrie Irving's called anti-Semitic. A whole lot of black folk were called, have been, usually black men, been called anti-Semitic. Malcolm X, someone pointed out to me at one time, uh, King Jr., Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is called anti-Semitic. Okay? Why do I say that? Here's why I say that. I'm not saying that those men were anti-Semitic. They're not anti-Semitic. I know some of those men. I know for a fact Desmond Tutu is not anti-Semitic. But they still say it. And folks within the Jewish community say that, you're a damn idiot. Other than that, brothers and sisters, I'm with you. <laughs> Seriously, I'm with you. You know, full solidarity with you. But when you say something I know not to be true, or something that's, I, I can't stand with something, I cannot stand by and support something I know, I know, I know is not true. Black folk, we, we need to, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with saying, well, you know what, I I don't feel comfortable with some of what ADL supports, what they advocate. That doesn't mean you're anti-Semitic. That doesn't mean you're anti-Jewish. It doesn't mean that you're pro-Hitler. You're just saying, well, you know, from my standpoint, you know, as someone who's who, who understands that the game is about power, and that's the power to push forth your agenda and, and, and you know, your your ideology, your goals, etc. You know, it just, you know, we just don't jibe on that one point. Censorship is not, I'm not going to support censorship, period. Uh, I'm not going to stand by you when, when something's wrong. Now, that doesn't mean that we're enemies now. It just means that, hey, as equals, as brothers and sisters, we have disagreements. Don't you have disagreements with members within your family? So if you have disagreements with members within your family, what do you do? Just kick them out the door? Okay. Well, you know, we're, we're, we have disagreements. And uh, that needs to be respected on both sides. And Anti-Defamation League, I'm telling you, that definitely needs to be respected on your side. Okay? Definitely needs to be respect on your side. You know, the uh, Greenblatt once said, what did he say? He said, we need to call people in before we call them out. Okay, I'm looking forward to the time when you you call um, the minute Minister Farrakhan. You call him in to have a discussion. And I, I don't even think it should be made public. I think it should be a very discreet meeting of, of equals in the home in, in other places, and you just sit down and just have a good talk, back a good back and forth. We'll see if that we'll call people in before we call them out. We'll we'll see how that goes with him, with Nori Muhammad, uh, Riza Riza, R I Z Z A, last name Islam. That young brother. We we'll see how that goes with that young brother. We we'll see how that goes with with some of these uh, Hebrew Israelite groups. Okay, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm not saying it should happen, but you know, but you're the ones. Who, you know, Mr. Greenblatt, he put out that statement, and I don't think, I don't think the ADL speaks for every single Jewish person in the United States of America. Jewish folk are just like black folk, man. We're, you know, ideology as far as political philosophy is concerned, we're all over the place, left, right, center, up, down. I mean, we're all over the place. Jewish folks are no different. I mean, you go look at Israeli politics, you'll see that. Go look at Israeli politics, you'll see that. But, you know, anyway, I just wanted to say that, say they talk about those three issues, share that with you, and then hope that, uh, then call upon some local conservatives, black and white. Check out the book Red, White, and Black by Dr. or by Robert Woodson Sr. I don't know if he's a doctor or not. No Left Turn in Education has been talking about this book recently. I'm going to get a copy of it and uh, read through it myself. I've reached my own conclusions on it. But I think it's going to be pretty exciting. Some pretty good stuff that's going to be in that. Of course, I have read other things by Dr. Woodson. 
and I have a lot of respect for uh, No Left Turn in, in education. So if they're if they're sort of like recommending a book or pushing a book, uh, it's it's definitely one I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get and do my own reading of it and reach my own conclusions about it. Okay, folks, uh, this is um, True American Podcast. Appreciate you giving me your time today. Please, let's have a discussion about some of the things I brought up. And also, go to YouTube, um, join my channel, uh, Corbin Seavers, or Book Talk with Corbin Seavers, either name, and um, hit, the, hit the like on this and share with other folks.